when it comes to security it is not only all about your users and team management making sure that users are secured and making sure that uh, all the users have got the relevant permission you spend a lot of time building your code deploying your code onto different infrastructure and it is very evident that you kind of pay a lot of attention to your build agents as well what are build agents so we we need a virtual machine to build and ship your code uh, we used uh, ubuntu in our ci cd uh, demos so if you go to the agent pool and go to the agents um, if you go to the default uh, azure pipeline and go to the agents you get bunch of agent these agents are could be a mac os windows or linux uh, however these are not managed by us as an administrator or organization uh, these are microsoft hosted agents what does that mean you don't have any control over these virtual machine microsoft gives you lends you these virtual machine whenever you want to run a build uh, and post whenever the build or deployment has completed microsoft kind of takes uh, or snatches away the virtual machine from you and you don't have any idea uh, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of builds you run on which virtual machine what was the ip address and was it shared or not uh, however the upside is uh, you don't need to manage these virtual machine uh, Microsoft manages for you you don't need to take care of the patching upgrade or things like that uh, everything is done by Microsoft however when your team kind of grows up and you need to make sure that um, you wanna you wanna have a more control over uh, the virtual machine or the build agents um, you want to make sure that you want to have a control over what you're downloading and who is accessing these build agents uh, you want to make sure that these build agents are uh, connected to your virtual private network and only authorized user are access can access these virtual machine uh, it is it is a good idea to use a self-hosted build agents uh, which are driven and governed by your team members uh, when it comes to managing a small set of uh, if when you don't want to manage these build agents Microsoft hosted agents are uh, best but the downside is um, every time you run a new build uh, Azure gives you a new virtual machine uh, and uh, everything starts from scratch so if the last time if you depend used a Golang or you d downloaded or installed any set of softwares onto that build agents next time if you if you want to make sure that you want to reuse that download again that's not going to happen because it's a new fresh piece of uh, virtual machine which you would be using in this video we're going to be looking at how you could manage and install uh, your custom build agent so let's get started uh, you could create a virtual machine i have already got this virtual machine a sample virtual machine on my azure uh, subscription if you haven't got Azure um, you can have one or what you could do is you could uh, uh, simply use any virtual machine be it on-premises uh, DigitalOcean GCP or uh, AWS or any flavor of virtual machine Linux Mac OS or Windows I'm using a Windows for the purpose of the demo uh, I've already got it logged in so I've already logged into my virtual machine I've RDP into this uh, so to to all this while we haven't got any uh, any custom any self-hosted uh, build agent so we've been using Microsoft's own build agent so what we're gonna do is we could go to any of these uh, agent pools agent pools are set of virtual machines or agents which you could use and you click on the new agent uh, it gives you set of instructions so you download the build agent um, probably save the file and then open the PowerShell and run it as an administrator um, go to the C drive and create a agent folder based on Microsoft's recommendation uh, all these uh, recommendation are right over here how, how you could uh, install an agent so you use this add type commandlet which uses a certain dotnet libraries to unpackage or unzip the folder you've just downloaded so what it does is it uses a command and add type and uses bunch of uh, libraries of dotnet to unzip uh, and extract the file to the directory 
uh, that's the that's the zip file we've just downloaded hit all right so if it has uh, unzipped the file and the next set of instruction are to run the run the config.cmd so what you could do is you could use the command prompt um, and then again the same set uh, same set of steps get into the agent folder and uh, run the config file and it's gonna it's gonna pop up with the uh, branding of azure pipeline and then it's uh, it's gonna ask you set of uh, uh, urls and set of questions which you need to answer uh, it asks for the enter server url uh, your url is uh, azure devops agent code red if you're coming from organization uh, instead of dev you would have your organization name go right over here paste it make sure there are no trailing spaces hit enter uh, enter the authentication type uh, I'm gonna use the pad which is uh, access token personal access token hit enter it it's gonna ask you for the personal access token how do you get the personal access token uh, I'm gonna open a duplicate tab and show you how you could get a personal access token this uh, pad token is pretty powerful so you want to make sure that you keep it handy and um, don't lose access of it and so you create a new token right from here and uh, give it a name Azure DevOps build ignore the typos and you define the scope uh, for the purpose of the demo I'm going to use the full scope however you could use a custom defined uh, and kind of uh, set a permission for each of for the verticals. So I'm going to use the full ex access uh, expiration. Uh, keep it for 30 days for now. Uh, create it, and it's going to give you the access token. Keep it, keep it handy because uh, once you've uh, closed the window, it's not going to give you the uh, token again. You'll have to regenerate the token. So I've copied it. Come right over here and paste it it's gonna put it in the hash format hit enter uh, re register agent uh, where you wanna register the agent enter the agent pool uh, I'm gonna enter and put it into the default one uh, agent name virtual machine or you could give a, a demo build agent hit enter scanning for the tool capabilities it's uh, runs its internal capabilities and then it has uh, it sees that it successfully added uh, to uh, the agent and now it asks for the work folder work folder is the folder where your all of your uh, builds uh, get saved so if you want to keep it by default uh, just uh, and hit enter and it's going to save all of your builds and artifacts in underscore work folder all right your build agent is successfully installed and now if you go to the agent you would see that you've got a, a agent all the utilities of the agents right over here and if you go to your default pool if you go to your agent pools and go to the default one go to the agent you should have the build agents right over here you can always uh, give it a restart slash run and it's, it's gonna scan the capabilities and make sure that you have the right permission and then it's and it kind of runs through set of uh, uh, jobs and it makes sure that your build agents is online again so you will see that build agent was offline again uh, you could always go ahead and run the uh, run.cmd uh, file and you've got the build agents online again right over here and you could always manage the uh, capabilities what kind of permission you want to give and you get set of information uh, like the name of the build agents uh, where is the home directory which is agent and then uh, from where it was accessed it was my personal system and then where all your build agents and stuff like that get saved and all of the information gets saved right over here and now you could you could put this 
Yeah, since you've got this virtual machine created, you could put a, this into a virtual network. Make sure the you if you want to keep it under a, a firewall and make sure that only ac authorized user from a dedicated network should be able to access this uh, virtual machine. Uh, you could always do that as well and maintain a granular level of permission for your custom build agents. That's it for now. If you want to make sure that you don't incur money, all you could do is you go to your uh, uh, Azure and switch off the virtual machine whenever you're not uh, not using it because there are high chances you might not be running build agents 24 by 7 uh, for majority of your workloads uh, and you can always turn off the virtual machine and when you come back in the morning you can always uh, log into your virtual machine and uh, run the, see, uh, the run file and you make sure that your build agents is up and running again. That's it for this module. I hope this was informative. Thank you.